I teach physics, and our students at all levels, the very lowest level to the very top level, many of them have a lot of difficulty doing basic algebra. And so what I've done in this video is I've interviewed a couple of other teachers, a physics teacher and a chemistry teacher, about the difficulties that their particular students have with algebra, and then proposed, well, what turns out to be not quite a solution, but proposed an alternate method for solving some of these really simple problems that does not make us resort to those equation triangles and things like that which eliminate algebra from the equation altogether. <laughs> okay, we're ready. So uh, our students have difficulty with basic algebra. So both physics teachers and uh, Mr. Dudley, could you explain what problems your students have, what difficulties your students have with basic algebra? Um, I think really uh, they're not comfortable with it at all. I, I think they just in general. In like general, I think there's a sense or a sense that they need to memorize the equation, and I never have them memorize the equation. So as soon as you throw up something that is different, where they have to um, solve for d or solve for t, they get flustered. There's no comfortableness with trying to isolate by doing opposite. Um, uh, if, if, the opposite if, function. The opposite function. So if I'm looking for D and I see, well, I need to get D by itself. Well, what's happening to D? It's being divided by T, so how would I get D by itself? Well, I multiply by T. If I multiply this side by T, then I multiply that side by T. That's the way I would think. But if you're asking them for T, and now they've got to do two things. They've got to get T, because we don't want T in the denominator. We want T in the numerator because we want to solve for it, so we want to get t up here. Well, now we've got to do another thing and get rid of b. Everybody or not even distance. have them try to subtract. They will there's, subtract? There's, there's no addition just, or subtract. Random, just whatever, ha like I, I, I like addition I, today, and yeah. I think I'll do that. Yeah. Well, let's start by talking about the density equation, which we struggle mightily with in chemistry. So um, chemistry teacher, uh, and you teach what levels of chemistry? I teach uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, so I teach just general chemistry, which is the standard track, and then I also teach um, the chemistry class for a lot of our students that go to technical school. Um, one of the most pervasive issues that I see is just trouble with rearranging symbols if there's not already numbers in the equation. And I don't know if you run into the same thing in your classes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I notice in particular is a, a very big issue, and it really confounds students, is if you have the variable underneath the division sign. That seems to give students the biggest problems. Um, it's I don't apparently know. like magic, solving for that one. Is right, like magic. it's wizardry. wizardry. Um, <laughs> and it really just frustrates me because it's very, very subtle things that are misconceptions that the students will have. You'll start with the density equation and you'll be trying to isolate for volume. And we learn, I go over a quick review of algebra with them, and the We'll isolate variables, we'll start with the top variable, and they understand that if you divide by that variable, it'll get, magically go away. Um, I mean, math mathematically it turns into one, but that's something that I think is lost in their understanding. When you ask them to isolate for something that's underneath the denominator, they do the same thing. They'll divide both sides by V to make the V go away, or if they want to get V to be by itself, what they'll do is to try to get the other variable to disappear. They'll divide both sides by m. And in their opinion, this magically becomes v equals d divided by lowercase m. And it's an issue that I've seen not only at this school, but the old school that I taught at. It's not just an issue here. It's just an issue with, I think, the way that math is taught to students. And when they get to science classes, they don't know how to decipher an equation that is primarily represented by letters and not just numbers with one variable. I think that's what the biggest issue is. So what we know is that our students have a lot of difficulty solving for these variables. Time in particular, volume and the density equation in particular, and this r, the distance in the law of universal gravitation equation. So what I'm proposing is something similar to cross multiplication. And you know, in cross multiplication, you take the numerator, multiply it by the denominator, put it on one side, take the denominator, multiply it by the numerator, put it on the other side. Well, for the exact same reason that you can do that, you can also do what I call cross switching and cross moving. 
And in particular, in solving for time and in solving for volume in situations like that, the cross switching is super convenient. So knowing that this is a fraction on one side and this is a fraction on the other side, all that you have to do is realize that you can take the numerator on one side and switch it with the denominator on the other side. So that would be t is equal to d over v. Solving for time, quick switch, not doing two separate steps. In this case, switch the volume and the density. So volume is equal to mass divided by density. And in the case over here, this is also a fraction the gravitational force F sub G divided by 1, and so you can just take those two and switch them again. R squared is equal to G M1 M2 divided by F sub G. Then you can take the square root of that quantity and you have the answer. And now cross moving. What we depend on is that one fraction on the left, one fraction on the right, fraction left, one fraction right, one fraction left, and one fraction right. So what we have to do in cross-moving and cross-switching in some kind of combination of those two is if I have an equation that's like this, and these three equations are pretty closely related in form, but they're equations we commonly come upon in physics, that uh, if I want to solve for this capital M on that side, I can move this denominator up to that numerator. There are no addition signs, no subtraction signs, but this gets moved to the numerator g r squared that moves up to the numerator. The g moves to the denominator. So cross switching. Numerator to denominator and numerator, denominator to numerator, cross moving, cross switching, doing whatever you need to. And uh, the m1, solving for that, again you take the r squared f sub g. Notice that multiplication is commutative so I can place this in any, any order I want to. And that M1, take the G, move it to the denominator. M2, move it to the denominator. <coughs> and then solving for this last one, the F sub E, the R squared in the denominator moves up to the numerator. And on the other side, we're solving for K. So the Q1, Q2 product moves to the denominator on the opposite side. When I teach my students how to do it this way, doing the cross switching and the cross moving, some combination of the two. It turns out that they do much, much, much better at all levels that I have taught. And it, it works really, really super well. There are fewer algebra mistakes. And, and then the problem with us and through chemistry is that this, this exact equation finds itself, I mean, density or even second law of F equals MA, well then uh, F over M is A, and then, I mean, just this very simple linear equation. We're just talking trying, three variables. Three no variables addition, no trying to find an unknown. How many times has it come up in our course? I don't know, okay. a dozen times. Okay. And so all you're doing is changing the letters, but to them it's just a completely different thing. There's no, there's no commonality, no transfer of knowledge from one equation to the other where you're not learning anything different at all here. It's just the same kind of relationship. Just find the unknown.